So some of the findings from the research have really first focused around how we can essentially improve the situation that we have found ourselves in, where we have seen certain types of land uses and certain types of zoning within that land use coming into potential conflict with the existing freight infrastructure and specifically with railroads. And so this has really fallen into four main areas, we believe. So one segment of this is long-range planning. Um, and within that, that is effective mapping. Um, and as you can see from this example here, we have a, a before and an after map in which a, a zoning application was coming in to rezone an area in an old industrial core. And as you can see on the map, if the infrastructure isn't necessarily highlighted. And when you see the second map coming up, essentially what was taking place was the rail lines and the major truck routes were being highlighted within this. So it gives you a different perspective and a different picture when you are making a decision as a planner as what will be you know, an effective rezoning of this area and making you think about potential mitigation options. So that's one sort of example. The second one essentially is the zoning components itself. So determining lot sizes and we found examples of uh, lot depth essentially where minimum lot depths that were being recommended which essentially helped to place that residential facility not, you know, in a different position so it's not in such close proximity to the rail line. Because, and this is because of the fact that both noise and vibration is a pressure. It's essentially a pressure wave moving through the air. And so essentially that is helping the more space you put between the object and the wave that's coming at it, the, the decibel sounds are diminishing over time. And so that means essentially and over the space. So it's lessening that impact on the house. And so and there were other zoning techniques that we also um, recommended, which was you know lot layout. So if you are building in one of these areas, maybe put the rooms within your house that where noise might not be an issue or vibration or light might not be an issue. For example, a bathroom or a closet. So as you can see from these pictures, you know, reorientating how the house looks on the lot. So again, you're helping to create space for that pressure wave to dissipate out for the, the sound or the vibration to be lessened. Um, another issue that we also really, really looked at was essentially, you know, are there mitigation options out there? And there are some mitigations out there in terms of how you go about soundproofing and insulating properties. There is a lot of research that's been done around airports um, and we have spent money mitigating around airports. There is a need for further research in this area specifically for rail because rail has a different noise to an airplane, obviously. And sometimes with rail you'll have loud, you know, loud sharp noises as they are building and putting trains together. And obviously the, the rumble of a train is different to the sound of you know, the jet engine. Um, and obviously with a very heavy freight train, vibration has a, you know, will have a different feeling, say, from the vibration you may get from an airport. So that was one recommendation we also said that needed to be more research done in this area. And really the last issue too that's really, really important in all of this is education and outreach. Um, making this, you know, an issue that people are aware of, talking about this with people, um, talking about it to planners, educating planners so that they can make really smart and informed decisions, you know, making a house property buyer really think about potentially you are buying a property near to an active freight facility so there is going to be noise, you know, helping are there ways that maybe, you know, people can be made more aware of that. There is one jurisdiction we know of in the country that's now changing this so it's being put into the deeds when you purchase a property to let you know that you are buying near an active freight area so you'll put on notice, you know, and smart decisions. Um, and finally, you know, education outreach too in terms of from an academic perspective, training the next generation of planners so that freight is a word that's on their lips, that they know about freight, that they understand what is freight's needs, they understand that it's a vital part of our economy, but also understand but there are also some things we can do to help offset so that we can still utilize land in a smart way, but we don't necessarily put a completely, you know, unsoundproof house right by a rail corridor, um, you know, such that then the people who may move in there, for them it may be a very unpleasant experience. Um, so that sort of was the major output from the research. And as you can see through these various things, there were also 
different schematics we put together on do's and don'ts. And we did also create a website which is www.envisionfreight.com. That was required out of the federal research and that was put together. That site is still live. And the idea of that was to just give some basic tips and tools on how to handle some of this and just to also, if you didn't know anything about freight and you were a planner, you could come to this website and learn a little bit about freight, a little bit about the issues, and also learn a little bit about the issues that are faced on the other side by potentially residential um, you know, and other land uses that you could say could be sensitive when they're put into proximity um, with freight uses. There is also a Canadian site, uh, it is www.proximityissues.ca. Um, and that is a joint collaborative between the railroads in Canada, the Railroad Association of Canada and the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, so it's, it's a joint initiative and they are continuing also to do more work and to develop more tools and, and tips etc for moving this issue forward. And um, I think one other issue too is just making sure that we keep moving forward on the education component on this. I think that's really important of educating everybody. Um, I, th I think then you have a better understanding of this issue and you know you can develop more smarter tools going around it because the freight's not going away, but residential development also cannot go away. If you are like many of us, you know, you want like to order things online, you want to get goods quickly, um, and that requires the freight system that we have here in the United States, which is a world-class freight system, is integrated, it's multiple modes, so it's from a plane potentially to a truck, to a distribution hub, maybe using on another mode, it could be coming in, obviously many stuff comes in through our ports, on containers, you see the containers on the trains very often, they're often now double stacked, but you also see the containers on the trucks as well, but finding a way to ensure that we can still keep that vital component of our country running, while still also allowing us to develop up our cities and to be able to utilize land in an effective way.